Sports Matters TV, bringing the sports home. Hey guys, welcome to Sports Matters TV. I'm in Cork. Uh, Louise is joining us at the moment. Um, Irish international, um, you know, a superstar when it comes to football. Uh, Louise, how's things with you? I hope you're staying safe. Yeah, yeah, all good now. So it's uh, yeah, it's good to be back in Ireland now. I've kind of I did did a uh, did the stint in London there for a while, hoping that the league was gonna um restart again, but unfortunately not. So um, yeah, back back home now and just doing just doing a bit of isolating before I head back into the family home. But but all good. Fantastic. And we we actually had you on our list last week, so the timing was obviously mental when we uh. We approached our agent a few days back, and obviously then we seen that you're uh, unfortunately you're going to leave Arsenal. But obviously you've got great memories at Arsenal, great club. You know you achieved quite a bit there. Um, what was it like to to spend a bit of time over in London? Yeah, absolutely loved it. I had um, I had three brilliant years with them, uh, and literally have yeah. There's you know there's there's no regrets there. We you know we won a few trophies. We had some great games. We had some a lot harder games. We've had a lot of finals. Um yeah, and you know, it's and it's just it's just a brilliant club, a brilliant setup, um, you know, great coaching staff and yeah. and really I was I got to play with some of the, you know, the most talented players in the world, really. Um yeah, so you know, it's I, I, I really uh don't have uh, have any bad things to say about about my time there and it's you know, progressed me as a player and yeah. And everything going forward, so yeah, um, you know, it's it's sad it has to come to an end. I just think in in this sort of way as well, you know, without a proper goodbye or, yeah, you know, knowing that, yeah, that that last game at the end of February, but the last time that I was wearing the Arsenal jersey, and um, yeah, but sure, this is you know, this is this is the way, and um, you know, it it could be a lot worse to be honest. Definitely, and speaking of the club in general, obviously we we've had Kenny McKay bomb on us in the past. Um, what was it like to to play alongside Katie McCabe? Obviously, you know, fellow international Irish captain. Um, obviously, she's incredible at the club as well. Yeah, yeah, it was just you know, it was it made it that bit easier. Obviously, coming to the club first, that she was already there, and you know, she was she was still trying to uh, you know to establish herself there a lot, you know, and yeah. I think when she first went, she did have a you know a a, a tough time to start off with and. And found it hard to kind of get that playing time, but now to see to see how she is now and and how she's progressed, and you know, to me, she's for especially for this season, she's been one of the standout players by far um, for me. And uh, yeah, so you know, she's only going to keep going in that direction, and um, you know, and and she and she does the same um, on the Irish team as well. I think her consistency with performances now is is really is really kind of a game changer for her. Definitely. And just before we, we switch from the Arsenal stuff back to the early days, obviously there's a lot of Dutch stars in that Arsenal squad. Steven's a big fan of, um, you know, the, the Dutch ladies up front. What was it like, I suppose, marking all these ladies in training? Obviously, uh, I know Vivian is, um, you know, she, she's a, a serious striker. But what was it like to, you know I mean, I suppose, to, to mark these ladies and watch them progress? Because, you know, it's, as you say, it's probably one of the best Arsenal squads that's been, you know, existent in, in all these years. Yeah, it was uh, challenging, to say the least. I'd get done in training all the time. Okay. All the time, they would absolutely do me, all of the duchies. Um, you know, but it, it's it's what made me uh, better and what challenged me. And, um, you know, every time when you get put up against these players, you know, you kind of, your mind... Uh, your frame of mind almost switches, you know, re into real competitive mode. You know, it was never kind of like, a, that was, I never approached any training session kind of just like it was another. Obviously, it maybe have some off days, but, you know, I really used it to challenge myself all the time um, and to be playing against kind of, of any of them. Obviously, I was a bit happier if a few of them were in like my team for some of the drills, but yeah, um, yeah now listen, they're, they're incredible and, and it's 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 the same across the board. You know, we have just some absolutely brilliant players and um yeah, but you know, they were World Cup finalists and and current European champions. So yeah, you, you really kind of put yourself up to them and you know, getting winning the ball off them or, you know, putting them off is definitely a little victory for uh, you know, for me or the other defenders. So um yeah, listen, it was yeah, something something that I absolutely love, challenge myself and training every day. You love it. Well, Louise, we have to rewind back to the early days. Obviously, you know, 
you're an international superstar when it comes to Ireland. Obviously, tell us about the early days. Where did that love for uh, for football come first day? Did you did you play JAA by the way? We we always have to ask that. Was there a bit of hurling, a bit of Camogie and football involved too? Uh, yeah, no, I definitely played um, a bit of Gaelic football. There was no there was no Camogie teams or anything um, in my area. I played a bit of Gaelic football. My dad used to play for Wicklow. Um, and yeah, and then I think I think I did just get um, you know I did I, I think I really enjoyed it, but I think I did get a bit of a fright. Um, you know, so I've, I've always been tall, and when I was young, oh, I don't know maybe twelve or something like the the Blessington Gaelic team here stuck me in goals. Um, you know, for the senior team, I'm like yeah, I was maybe twelve. I don't know, and that just scared me. That just absolutely scared me. <laughs> Um. Yeah. So. Um. But you know. So. But it was always football. Was always the number one, and and kind of playing the other sports. I definitely did it because I enjoyed it. But, um. You know. I just love keeping active and just doing everything all the time. Um. Yeah. But so. Uh. Football was always was always the first. Um. Was always the first love. So I just I, just always had a ball under my arm. Was always you know, kicking everything anything and. Um, yeah, and so I just would have started playing on a boys' team from when I was like six or on the under six team, and and then that was it. It just it just kept going and going, and there was nothing that was kind of going to stop me. And I had no, um, you know, nothing nothing really there that was that was ever going to put me off. Um, stop playing football, you know what I mean? Yeah. And tell us about that. Um, the, the Irish debut. Obviously, that's a huge team. Like you, you know, you've got so many caps under your belt now for Ireland. No doubt, you're looking to reach the 100 mark. But what was it like to, to you know, like obviously underage? It's it's obviously a fantastic team because our imaginations when we we're teenagers is incredible. But obviously, to make that senior uh, bow, what was that like for you personally and for the family? Yeah, yeah, it was it was great. Now it was only a. Uh... It was, you know, a really, a really quick debut, but it's still, you still, um, that, that feeling is something you'll never forget of, of absolute fear, um, and excitement and, and everything. And even now, one of my, my roommates, um, on the Irish team, she was, so I, I came on for her, um, back, you know, for, for that first cap back in, uh, 2017. So 2017, 2007, January. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so uh yeah you know so that's that's something we kind of still you know that we still uh you know have a bit of a laugh about and stuff but yeah that's you know yeah just of being able to put on that irish jersey and you know exactly a senior cap is you know something that not too many people can say that they have and then yeah thankfully i've just been able to to keep going and and, and rack up a few more caps and yeah hope you know you you of course i want to get to that target of 100 but just whatever, you know, whatever way it goes, I'm, you know, incredibly proud of just those putting on that jersey. Definitely. And it's we we've seen the Irish uh, ladies team shine these last couple of years. Obviously new management, it's 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 looking well. Obviously, uh, there's 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 a good vibes in the camp at the moment, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, no, it's been you know, it's been going great. Um I think we've really kind of found yeah, found found our way and um, you know, really, really coming together as a team and um, just like a great set of girls there and, and talented and you know I think everyone has stepped up their their game in terms of you know wanting to kind of you know be professional and and even though you know there's still a lot of the girls that still play in Ireland here and it's not a professional league you know they're acting like professionals and training like professionals as much as they can in every situation so yeah. you can really see the um the difference there and uh yeah and then Vera just coming in you know she's She's just been, you know, a breath of fresh air. Um, and she's just really simplified the game for us. She's broken it down so simply that it's hard to get wrong, you know. And it's obviously down to us in terms of the performance. But I think even when maybe mistakes are made or something happened, you know, we're all very well aware of kind of where it came from. So, you know, we'll, we'll improve it then for the next game. Awesome. Um, and, yeah, and so just we've... Yeah, we're very proud of kind of where we come and um yeah, you know, and, and for those games to start back up now again in September is is really, really exciting. We can't wait. Now Louise, we always have to mention, right? We we're, we're all against, you know, you know, equal pay. We know how much all these Premier League boys get in England and, and across the world. Um 
do you think that obviously in ladies football, you know, the pay should be a lot better? Obviously, it's it's tough, you know. It's 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 you know, the rewards are there, obviously, but you know, you see the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo probably on four hundred grand a week. Do you think uh, you know the pay should be a bit better in ladies football? Um, I just think there should just be a bit more. Um, yeah, just like you know, if if we are professional footballers, enough to kind of yeah you know be able to kind of make make that living you know i'm very well aware that yeah at the moment maybe women's football it's it's not making as much income as as you'd like it to do so you know to kind of say that we should be getting paid so much more money yeah. um you know we've we've still got a lot a lot to work uh, to work forward to that but i think in terms of just investing in in the team um is massive and then hopefully that will you know in in turn that will come you know and it's it's just one of those where it is and it's and and you see it now you know even trying to to look for a club now a lot of the women's teams they don't know their budgets they yeah. don't they don't know what's going to happen um and it just it does it it uh it saddens me and angers me that you know when when it comes to budget cuts it's it's taken from the women's team um you know, and and in the grand scheme of an entire football club, it's actually it's that's so minimal, um, when there is so much to actually gain from it, um, you know, because the women's game it's not going anywhere. It is only growing. This is you know this this whole pandemic is obviously, um, you know, not not ideal for a lot of people, um, yeah. and you know, and that and that includes women's football, but. Um, yeah, you know, I just, I just think it's, it will come to be a sane investment, and it's just, I think it's just clubs taking that chance, and, um, you know, I feel like if they do pull that kind of funding from women's teams, it's, it's, re it's minimal in the grand scheme of things. If they were, you know, compared to taking it of, I don't know, some of the hotels they get for the men's team, or a little bit of wages, or this, that, and the other. You know, it's, it is it, one. One weeks of uh, of you know even a second you know a, a team that's maybe in the bottom half of the table you know one of yeah. someone's wages there that that will literally fund a couple of a couple of girls for an entire year um you know so it, it, there's no um there's no comparison so it's just it's something yeah that needs to be worked on but you know we need to keep generating the the interest as well but i think it just showed in the irish team that if you invest if you invest in a team um and believe in them uh you really can kind of get some massive gains and and that's uh, you know i think we've i think we've proven that um Definitely. as an irish team you know, that we're coming. and we're seeing the crowds obviously the crowds are flocking for the games obviously you know what i mean we're um you know you're onto something special so it's only uh, a matter of time before you know we, we see all that kick off as well and Louise, we have to ask you, obviously, I, I won't be a TV presenter to, for, to dig for information. I'm all about inspiring people and I'm all about, you know, having positive interviews. But um, obviously, you, you've got some big decisions to make these next couple of months. Um, you know, is it possible that we could see you maybe, you know, move out to America, play out there, you know, maybe do something in Australia? Or do you reckon, you know, maybe the UK is where you need to stay and, and obviously do some, some more damage out there and, and, and you know, shine? Yeah, yeah, no, it's still, it's definitely, it's one of those decisions that I, I haven't fully made yet. You know, I, I'm really enjoying the UK, um, and I think I still have a lot more to, to do there and achieve there. Um, you know, even, even at that, yeah, you know, the American League is, is, is something else. I think the pace of that game is unbelievable, and the forwards you have to be marking, they're absolutely lightning quick. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So you know that's where I, you know, I, I, I could, I could struggle there a little bit. Um, you know, I definitely use my, my, uh, my head in terms of you know knowing how to play the game, and you know some of them are just lightning. So, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, and I, I think so. I think just somewhere like the UK, it suits me. It suits my style of play. Um. Obviously, it depends on different teams, but you know, I've I've been able to adapt to Arsenal's style of play and 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 prove myself there. So, uh. Yeah, listen. There's, it's really is. I, I really don't know what, the, what the next step is. It's tough, um, I know. Still, With COVID nineteen, it's nearly impossible to know what to do. You know, but um, you know, we hope yeah. we see you back in England. Obviously, England's, you know, it's, it's such an exciting league out there. Obviously, there's so yeah. many, you know, Irish ladies out there. 
and um, plenty of clubs that will no doubt want your signature as well. So hopefully we see some of that in the next couple of weeks. I know it's too too soon to tell, but fingers crossed. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully something can just be yeah be done soon and give that little bit of peace of mind. Definitely, definitely. And just before we go, Louise, obviously. We always have to ask you, because obviously we know Denise O'Sullivan quite well. She lives literally just up around the corner from us when, when she's back home. Uh, you know, how proud are you? Uh, like, obviously Denise is shining in America. She's, for such a small girl, she's, she's like the Roy Keane of women's football, perhaps, with her uh, control and style and stuff. Um, you know, what do you think of Denise? Obviously, she's a great girl, and do you think she can be, you know, an absolute superstar? Um, I I already think she is. To be honest, yeah. I think she's she's doing herself incredibly proud, doing herself justice, bringing you know every little possible inch of of talent. She's trying to bring it out of her. Um, you know, you see that you see that anytime she's in with the Irish team, she's she's constantly learning, trying, asking new questions. She's you know she's she's even now you know, really stepped up and taken a, a leadership role in the Irish team, which I've seen now in, in the last um, couple of years, which is incredible. Um, you know, and it just adds something else to her, to her talent. And yeah, she literally, you know, she's, yeah, she, she blows my mind in training, you know, how she keeps hold of the ball in such a tiny space. And she's aware that, you know, there's a little half a foot of space that she can turn into and she just goes into it and, yeah, you know, she's just gonna she's gonna keep going and she's she's literally, you know, in yeah, in her prime and sure we, we kind of started we almost made our debuts, you know, around the the same time of the Irish team. So she's you know, she's racked up we've in around the same amount of caps. Um and she's absolutely so she has plenty of she'll be hitting the the two hundreds, no problem if she just keeps going the way she's going. So um yeah, no, she's she's just an incredible talent, and um, yeah, very fortunate to to really get to to play with her, and then just to see how she's yeah grown in America to be you know to be one of the kind of MVPs in the in the US league yeah. is you know you can't what else have you got to say there you know she's she's brilliant so and just and just a great girl she'll never lose her cork accent she'll never lose she'll never forget where she's from um there's always a few little words that she says very kind of yeah americanisms but um now she'll she'll never lose it and as soon as she's back in for you know you see her at the start of the day and by the end of it she's a proper cork onion again so it's not a bother to her and she loves her coffee uh Louise, yep. we'll, uh, we'll load out catch up with you in a few months. Um, I would say enjoy yourself the, the next couple of weeks, but it's very hard with COVID-19. You know, obviously, restrictions are starting to lift, and we're, you know, we can do a bit more. But uh, best of luck with the decisions you make in the next couple of months. Obviously, you know, we, we do hope you stay in the UK. Obviously, America will probably come calling, and you'll have all these offers. But best of luck with choosing what club you're going to go to. Um, and thank you, as always, for your time. It means a lot. Lovely. Thanks, Mel, Jerry. Sports Matters TV. Bring the sports home.